so today we're gonna read the book the elf and the shoemaker so let's get started i'm gonna even show you the pictures of what i'm gonna read and let's get started okay let's begin once upon a time a shoemaker lived with his wife above his shoe workshop the shoemaker was a good man and he worked hard but he was very poor the day came when he had only enough leather to make one pair of shoes. He cut the leather and left it on his workbench. I will be able to make a better pair of shoes and after I have had a good night's sleep. He told his wife as they um, went upstairs. That's the picture. The next morning, bright and early, the shoemaker went downstairs. What a surprise he had! One, one, on his workbench, where the leather had been, there was a brand new pair of shoes. They were neatly and perfectly made, with no a stitch out of a place. These shoes are masterpiece. Masterpieces. The shoemaker exp exclaimed to his wife. He put them in the window, hoping someone would come to and buy them. Do the picture. That's the new shoes, and that's when they will look at the new shoes. Sure enough. A finely dressed young man soon and tired the workshop to try on his on the shoes. They fitted perfectly and they were so handsome that the man happily paid a high price for them. With the money, the shoemaker was able to buy enough leather to make two new pair of shoes. By the time he returned his shop, he was tired. So he cut out the leather and left it on his workbench. Then he spent. Then he went upstairs to bed. That's the pictures. The next morning, the shoemaker had enough surprise. There, there on the workbench were two new pairs of shoes. They were even more beautiful than the first pair and were just as perfectly made. The shoemaker put them in the window and before lunchtime he had sold both pairs <clears throat> of for a very good price. Now he had enough money to buy a letter for four pa pairs of shoes. Once again, he cut out the leather, left it on his workbench, and went upstairs to bed. And once again, he came downstairs next morning to find beautiful shoes, all made up and perfectly, perfectly stitched. stitched. The same thing happened every day for weeks. The shoemaker and his wife were not poor anymore. So that night, the shoemaker left some leather, all cut and ready to sew, on his workbench as usual. Then, instead of going to bed, he and his wife had hid behind a curtain at the back of his shop. Of the shop. There, they, there they wait, waited and waited and waited. The shoemaker and his wife were just about to go to bed when, at the stroke of midnight, the shop door opened and in danced two tiny elves. They skipped up to the workshop workbench and quickly began 
began sewing the leather into fine new shoes. As they worked, they sang, We will sew and we will stitch to help the shoemaker grow rich. Soon the shoes were finished and the little elves leaped off of, off the workbench and danced out of the workshop. Those kind elves have helped us, said the shoemaker. Astonished, we must repay them. Did you see how thin, thin their clothes were? His wife asked. And their little feet were bare. Those poor little men must be freezing. Let's let's make some warm clothes for the elf to show how grateful we are, said the shoemaker. The next day, the shoemaker's wife knitted two cozy wool jacks. Jackets, two tiny scarves, and two pairs of warm pants. The shoemaker used the finest leather to make two little pairs of boots. I have to show the other page because I didn't see the pictures. That night, instead of leaving the letters on, on his uh, workbench, the swimmaker left the clothes all wrapped up in a shiny paper iron ribbons. Then he, then he and his wife hid behind the curtain to wait. At the stroke of midnight, the shop door opened, and in came the little elves. They hopped up and onto the workbench and saw the presents that had been left for them. They opened the parcels at once, and in the twinkling of, at one, of an eye, they had dressed in their brand new clothes. They knew that the presents were the shoemaker's way way of saying thank you and they did a happy dance together singing now the shoemaker grown rich there's no need to sew the stitch then they hopped off of their workbench and carried out the door The shoemaker and his wife never saw a little elf again. But their but their trouble troubles were over and they had a good and happy life together for many long years. The end. Okay guys, I hope you guys oh I have to show you the picture. So I hope you guys like the book and love the book especially. And I hope you read a lot and take an air test on it. So Thanks for watching. Bye and subscribe, like, comment, and ring the bell button and share. Yeah, share. So thanks for reading with me and bye guys. Mwah.